So welcome back to the Tom Lamb YouTube channel. A um, couple of videos ago, we um, we were blasting air out of this uh, big fire extinguisher tank to uh, try and remove dust and debris and whatever else from on the uh, square baler. And um, since then, I've had a lot of positive response over this, like a lot. And I thought, well, I'll take this a bit further then. So uh, today, we're going to be making the jets. So these are going to be the bits that are placed around the machine where the air comes out of so we can like spread it about and do different things with it so uh, you'll have to let me know what you think to it in the comments and uh yeah we'll have a look at it so let's get started we're going to be using the cnc uh plasma cutter and uh rolling some uh, this cone and all sorts of bits but let me show you and then we'll explain what we're doing These are the jets. There's the first jet. That hot? Ow! Yeah, that's hot. That'll, uh... There's the first jet. You see, we've got a nice curved bit. That that's bit. A tiny bit more, don't they? A bit more. The next jet is the tornado jet. Bit more, let's have a bit more. Right, that's it. So they're the first few bits. We've got two different types of jets. We've got like a fan jet, which we'll do first. And then the other big jet, which is like a, like a half moon shape. We're gonna roll that in the rollers into a cone um, so that when it, so I put it on the end of this tube, so that when it comes out the tube, it, we're going to put some fins inside of it, so the air twists, so it comes into the cone, twists, spreads out, and then hopefully creates like a tornado. This is the first bit. We've uh, crushed this bit of pipe in the uh, press, as you've just seen, and this will be so that air comes down this pipe into here, can, squeezes it into this like oval shape here, and then it goes into this jet which I'm going to start welding together now, and you can uh, have a watch. So here's the jet. So that bit that we, uh, the pipe, will be welded in just here. That fits on there, just like that. And then I've got all these bits, and the reason I've cut these is so we can weld them from the back, so that they sit... They're not going to stand there, are they, until I weld them. So they sit like that. I'll just put it there so you can see. And that creates like a fin inside, so the air comes down here, and then with these plates, it diverts it where we want it to go, and then that will weld back on top there. So let's get it welded up and see what it's like. 
So that's it, we've welded that up. Still a little bit hot, welded all the way around so the air can't get out. It needs to be quite strong. So, um, cause it obviously is gonna be a high jet of air coming through here. And we don't want it to all uh, be flimsy and drop to bits. So the next thing, weld that in just there, tack it in. Just hold it above those little holes. Make sure it's in the right place. Cause when we weld through the back, we want it to, uh, to touch it, don't we, so just tank that in there. Might as well do all three of them. Next one, just there. Like that. And get that next one in. Just there, like that. Give it, we'll give it a bit of gap, actually. Just like that. I'll we'll make sure they're upright. That looks pretty good actually, isn't it? How's that looking? So then now we can see behind, these are obviously the bits that we'll cut off in a bit, but we can fill in if I just... Uh... You can actually fill these in with weld and it will go through to the um, to these bits and hold them. So we'll uh, let's have a go at doing that. Now that's filled, filled them gaps in. Makes it nice and neat as well. Now I've welded all the edges up, look. Filled all these bits in, so these um, can't move. See the jets in there, look. So when the air comes down, it'll be diverted and spread out, but we've done it half moon shape. So we can, we need a bit of air over that side and over that side and in the middle. So um, hopefully this is gonna work really well. The next part is the pipe. On there, oh look at that. Oh, someone knows what they're doing, don't they? Last little bit. Look at this, look. It's the Tom Lamb Ramjet. Lambjet. We're gonna call it Lambjet. So we've made a mock-up for our first air test. Lamb Force, the Lambjet. Right, let's try it. Ready, three, two, one. And now bending this into a cone shape with the old with the old rollers, but it's, it's quite hard work actually. Starting to get a bend on it. Ta-da! So this is the cone jet. So um, sort of done it, just uh, welded it together just here, like that. So basically how this, well I guess, well this is how my head tells me it's gonna work. I actually got this idea from watching Thunderbirds. Um, when they break into the plutonium vault, there's this thing on the front and it's like, and it looks a bit like this. So I thought, yeah, that'll work. So what we're gonna do inside, we're gonna put like a, uh, like a bit of a work, well, just a couple of little flaps, like a bit of a worm. So when the air comes down here, as soon as it hits this, it starts to twist it. So when it gets to the end here, it, don't, it only needs to twist once. So it's a bit like the barrel of a gun because it's twisted. And as it comes out, it, um, it twists and twists and twists and hopefully makes a tornado, but whether that works or not, I do not know. So this will be for like mounting under the axle. Um, probably put this in the chamber as well where the stuffer arms are, because it's quite a big area. Whereas those other jets, they're, they're sort of doing like a, a, like a flat area. Whereas these, I want these to do like quite a big area. So as it comes out, I want it to go everywhere instead of just in like one Pacific spot. So hopefully, hopefully, That'll work well. So the Ramjet, the Lamjet, the Lamjet we're calling it. I don't know whether to fit that just here 
like that. The good thing about this is it's nice and compact and you don't have to have stuff everywhere. We can literally mount it just there and, uh, and forget about it. Or we could go just here, because down that end of the baler, we don't ever get any build up to be honest. It's always around here with straw coming through here or building up just here from the, on top of the knotters where the knotter blowers are. So we could fit that just there on a big bracket. And you've got to remember as well that the tank we're going to be using is 10 times the size of what that fire extinguisher one is. So there's going to be a serious amount of force coming out of this. So it should, any build up just here, it should completely shift it. So I'm thinking we'll probably end up mounting it just there like that. Or yeah, I think, I think so. Or, or just there. Not sure yet. We're going to have to have a look at it. So if that's mounted there like that, uh, the next thing I'm going to do on the end here, I'm going to have a 90 degree bend or a 45 degree bend that goes up just there. And it wants to be adjustable as well. Because remember, if we make a load of these, you want to be able to fit them wherever you want. So if we fit that just there, a 90 degree bend will go across there to the tank that's only going to sit just there. Um, or, we could, or we want to put a T-piece on there as well, because this side of the tank is going to run this jet here and the one down on the axle as well. Whereas the other side one will run another one of these and we'll probably have one go to the front slip clutch or something or in, into this chamber in here. I'm not too sure yet, but this is something to look at in the future. We're in the early stages of development at the moment. Another thing I've just been working on as well, whilst messing around in the workshop with these uh, jets, um, I've actually got a uh, fire extinguisher tank, well, a fire retardant tank, which I'm going to be putting next to the tank on top. So the way it's going to work is very, very simple. So say if you've got a fire on the machine, and you're like, oh, I've got to get it put out quick. We'll press a, press a solenoid in the cab, which will open the fire retardant tank into these lines for the jets then press the um press the uh you know blow off valves and then it will completely cover the whole entire machine with fire retardant stop it from uh hopefully stop it from catching fire so that's another idea i've got so we're actually combining two two systems into one so you haven't got to go out and buy like a uh expensive fire uh, fire extinguisher system um where it tries to put it out this will do everything so not only will it clean the machine it will extinguish a fire as well, hopefully. I can't see why it won't work, so it sh that should be pretty good as well. So that's another bit of a update on the uh, bale blaster. A um, few people have been saying, oh, how are you gonna control it? Well, there's these, um, I found these valves you can get. Just here, look. So these are a valve that can go on the end of a compressor or whatever, they're a piston valve. So they'll just open, dump the air, shut close again. And they're not actually electronic, they're controlled by a little jet of air. So you could send like a bit of a, a, a positive pressure of air to it and it'll open the valve. So very, very simple. So, you know, I think this thing's got quite a lot of potential, but I'm still messing around with it. I still think like one of these air jets that I'm doing the, um, the fan one, I might squeeze it together a bit so it gives it a bit more pressure, but don't know yet. Also as well, the compressor, the compressor tank that's going up the top, There'll be a valve each side because everyone's like, oh, you could have solenoids everywhere and that. And it sounds a bit complicated to me and too much. I want it as simple as possible because on this whole thing, there's only going to be two moving parts and that's two valves. And that makes it very reliable, hopefully. So there'll be a, a uh, on one side of the tank, there'll be a valve. And on the other side of the tank, there'll be a valve. And you'll be able to operate these by pressing a switch one, so switch one side, which will do that jet there and the one down to the axle. And then if you press the other side one when it's refilled again, I don't know how long that will take. I'm guessing 10 minutes, something like that, five, 10 minutes. But we, we only want it trickling in so it doesn't burn the compressor out on the tractor. So like, let's say every 20 minutes. So it'll be up there. That side will control these two. The other side, I'll probably send it to the other side and maybe to the slip clutch as well. Or, or you can put them wherever you want. You know, that's the good thing about these things. That's why I'm putting those 90 degree bends on or the 45, you can put these wherever you want. So like the fan jet one, I thought, what a great idea to have it under the engine of a combine where all the dust and stuff might settle. Under there, hit it, bang, out. Really, really good. The next thing I thought about, these are really, really good for when you're moving fields. So you've been to a farmer's farm, you don't wanna spread all the weeds around and put it into the next field. So give this a couple of blasts. <laughs> It won't get rid of all the weed seeds like blackgrass and everything like we suffer from, 
it'll get rid of the majority of it though and then you haven't got to get out and you know try and blow it down all the time it makes things very simple so i'm hoping fingers crossed this this bail the tomlam bail blaster as i'm making here is going to be very successful so we will see but let me know what you think in the comments because i'm i'm really interested to know what people think about this because me i'm just sort of doing it and just guessing it as i go along do people think oh this is really good i mean i've had loads of people say oh yeah this is really really good but let me know if it's really really good so see you all soon cheers bye bye Massey pulling a well.